Stitch Together Charlotte is a community building and mentorship program planned and led by leaders from 10 neighborhoods alongside influencers from within their communities. Funded by the Knight Foundation and the City of Charlotte, this effort strives to create connections which stitch together our city. The idea for Stitch Together Charlotte came from city staff and the rich and impactful experiences gained through working with neighborhood leaders across the city. The effectiveness of their hard work, passion, and commitment is second to none, and when built into city decision-making, projects, and investment can make for a stronger and more sustainable Charlotte. There was also recognition that neighborhood leaders' extensive commitments inside their own communities often leaves little time or opportunity for connections and collaborations across Charlotte. This disconnect contributes to residents focusing on our differences instead of recognizing the many ways we are all alike. The Stitch Together Charlotte hypothesis is this. As the community works to address socioeconomic immobility, including the segregation of our population, we can begin to stitch together our city by bringing neighborhoods and their leadership together. North, south, east, and west, we are all one and we will all lead as one. Neighborhood leaders and influencers from each of these communities will work together with other neighborhoods in the program to complete a project of their choosing. The one requirement to work across geographical boundaries through mentoring, skill sharing, and implementation. While groups are working on these projects, six Stitch Together workshops will be hosted by leaders in each neighborhood to discuss big topics that affect our community, including capacity building, gentrification, redevelopment, and engagement. The Stitch Together Charlotte Project celebrates the leaders, the next generation of community leadership, and the unique characteristics that makes these neighborhoods so special. My name is Khadija Kareem, and I'm from the Cedar Hill community. Cedar Mill is a Nice place to live, nice development to live. We're trying to make it a safe, uh, beautiful, and uh, engaged community. We have a very diverse community. We have lawyers, entrepreneurs, nurses, entertainers, the younger generation. We have the middle aged, the older generation. Most of all, we have a community that's uh, really committed and uh, really bold to make changes so they could share some of that boldness, some of that, you know, why are they so committed and, you know, some of the things that they have gone through uh, to help other communities. And also, we need to know what, how other communities are functioning, you know, how they're dealing with infrastructure, how they're dealing with their traffic, how they're dealing with their safety issues, you know. I think we all have, you know, different ways of dealing with these issues. And so, you know, we know that we can learn from other communities and we can also teach how we have uh, dealt with these things in our community. I'm Brenda Campbell with the Clean Park community. Yes, yes. Well, guess what? Clean Park is a family-oriented community and it is a community that is supportive and is also a safe community and our community is a community that is an example for the Charlotte community. It is so important to share the experiences so we can learn about the strategic impact of the overall growth and the economic development of the city of Charlotte and learn about and share our histories of the individual neighborhoods and how to preserve our history. That is so important because every neighborhood has history and we need to hear about it. What can Clinton Park teach other communities? Well, they can teach them how to engage their residents and fragile communities who may feel ignored by the city and community members. We can also teach them how to organize, how to sustain their community, and how to accept and embrace change. Each one teach one, and we need to make sure that we're focused on our communities because right now our communities are fragile. There is a lot of funding out there that's available for communities, but what they need to do is they need to make themselves 
present at the table. Hi, I'm Alan Nelson with the Commonwealth Morningside neighborhood. A tiny little neighborhood, kind of in the heart of a lot of cool things going on, a lot of development, most of it good development, a lot of connectivity, bike, pedestrian, and, and there's so many things happening. Uh, we feel really positive overall. We're excited to be where we are and, and growing. Uh, a lot of influx of new apartments, so we have a combination of residential, single family, and wonderful park right in the middle of the neighborhood. I think the last couple years, especially the fall of 2016, showed us we, we still definitely have some deeper issues. Um, we don't have as many people to draw from, um, but when there have been big issues, people people come out of the woodwork to, to get things done. And it's wonderful to, to be able to connect more with you know leaders beyond just the neighboring neighborhoods around us. And, and we're, we've been good about that. Every little neighborhood has its own set of issues. A lot of times you'll interact the same neighborhoods right around you have similar issues, a little bit different, but similar. And then the further you know, outside you go, maybe it's across town, you know, the issues may be very different, but we want our city as a whole to be one strong, healthy community. And then the more we interact and share, if we all just chip in a little bit, it can be so much better for everyone. As the name says, Stitch Together Charlotte, really working together with neighborhood leaders all across the city to start working on some serious progress to make Charlotte absolutely wonderful. My name is Scott Gartland and I'm representing the Country Club Heights Neighborhood Association. Our neighborhood is a great neighborhood in Charlotte because it offers so many different things to the neighbors. It's a very walkable neighborhood so you'll always see folks out with their dogs walking around. We have a local elementary school that's within walking distance of everyone. A project that we're really proud of that was actually taking shape in the next coming month is something called Paint the Pavement. The City of Charlotte really just started this last year and it's an idea to um, address traffic calming. So what we're going to do is we're going to, there's about a 2,000 square foot intersection adjacent to the school where a lot of parents and students walk and we're going to paint it. And so uh, it's just going to be really bright and noticeable and the idea is that it draws attention to the fact that the streets are, are not just for cars. A really exciting project that developed a few years ago in our neighborhood um, is our community garden. There's about 60 or so individual plots that go out to neighbors in the area who'd like to have a garden and you know, raise vegetables and, and fruits. Neighborhoods are so different in Charlotte. And so even though we've done some things over the years that we're really proud of, we know other neighborhoods have done different things that they're very proud of that are not what we've done. And so the fact that we're gonna to get together and plan and learn from each other um, will actually do what Stitch Charlotte is trying to do and bring the city together. My name is Daryl Reginald Gaston and I am a resident of the Druid Hills community in the North End corridor of Charlotte. And I like to say that North End is the best end. We see the importance of building relationships and partnerships and working through various issues from a collaborative standpoint of view. And I felt that this initiative of Stitch Together Charlotte would be that vehicle that could help assist us in doing so. Iron wears out. So if iron will wear out, I would definitely offer that the community leaders that we have in place now will one day wear out as well. So it's important that we impart knowledge, that we share knowledge. We must develop leaders who are willing to serve and willing to be committed. Within our community, we have a very good track record as it relates to applying for matching grants. We have been the recipient of more than $100,000 in various grants. And through those efforts, they have allowed us to do some things that affect change in our quarter. Everyone matters. We're all visible, vital, and valuable. And that we have to be intentional in our efforts of relationship building. So I would offer that Druid Hills really does have some things that we could share with other neighborhoods and we're also open to some development and learning from others as well. 
My name is Charles Vacala. I live in Genesis Park. Um, it's the neighborhood I'm representing for us to together, Charlotte. We're boarded by other uh, burgeoning communities. Um, we're close to Bright Walk, which is a community that's been seeing exponential growth and value, you know what I mean? So, um, and then kind of leaves a little opportunity begging for um, the adjacent community. How does it invest in itself to grow with the city or grow with the uh, local environment? Uh, hopefully, you know, make good on people's investments because home ownership has been the cornerstone to wealth building in this country, or at least that's the idea. Charlotte does have a history of segregation, you know what I mean? And every city has a history of challenges. And whether that challenges be uh, socioeconomic, whether they be uh, racial, whether they be educational or uh, bureaucratic, you know what I mean? That's just how can you stitch together so many people into a place? Because that's what the city and the urban thoroughfare is about, you know what I'm saying? Like coming into a place that has a lot of offerings, a lot of different people, a lot of ethnicities, and that's the beauty of it, but then sometimes that's the challenge of it too. A lot of the projects that I've seen in our community have been partnerships with the City of Charlotte of different um, activities. One of them is Cerro Hazel's No Barriers. So between the two communities, there was a physical barrier um, down the streets, and I don't know if that was an issue of crime. They said it was an issue of construction, but long past the construction that was uh, barring that street, the barrier was still there. There's an adjacent park right between the two communities, and so we would come down to the park and there would be food and different activities for people to get to know each other from different parts of that barrier between the Genesis Park community and the Bright Wall community. These neighborhoods can be stitched together. I just wanted to be a part of it to see how, you know what I mean, what I can learn and learn from it pretty much, and as well as what I can bring back to the community, of course. My name is Heidi Pruess. I am representing Hayden Commons neighborhood. A typical, small, new neighborhood where every home represents a different ethnicity that's moving into our area. Uh, it's not an old neighborhood, so that means that the folks who live there are, I think it's fair to say, all fairly new to Charlotte. There's this yearning for, especially people who are new to Charlotte, to get connected. When you know you hear Stitch Together Charlotte, you're like, oh, I want to be part of that. I want to really understand how our neighborhood relates to all the other neighborhoods in Charlotte. We hear all this stuff about South Park all the time. Well, we're in the North, so what does that mean for us? You know, we have had a homeowners association in our community since the inception, but it's never really been active until about the last four years or so. And one of the things that we did is we held our first community event and we said, okay, what's important to you? Where are your priorities? We've been collecting these fees, but we don't have a common pool or a common neighborhood amenity. So how do you want us to help this community? What are you looking for when you think about home and your neighbors? It's really important to bring people into the fold. You know, it, Sometimes it's a difficult thing to learn how to fit your ideas that you came with from another community into the existing community. We need to, of course, always educate our youth and have them come up and be our next generation of leaders. But we also have valuable talent that's moving into this area because we're a desirable place to live. And that talent needs to figure out and be kind of educated a little bit about how they fit in with not only their immediate neighborhood, but how that works within the rest of Charlotte. My name is Jamal Kennard and I'm representing the Lakewood neighborhood. The name, uh, Stitch Together. Um, I think if you stitch something together, that means it needs, is either broken or it's falling apart and you need to be stitched back together. So just hearing that name and understanding how segregation is a huge issue around Charlotte, not around just ethnic backgrounds and race, around economics, around uh, you know access to resources. It's a segregation issue that's here. Um, I think we need to be stitched back together. I think um, when you make people aware that it's, it's happening, um, it, it takes people out of their normal routine. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even realize this was going on. I was just living my life and I thought everybody was happy like me. Um, make people aware that there's some different things going on out there. Not that you're trying to bring their mood down, but if you bring awareness, you also provide opportunity for somebody to reach out a helping hand and also to point you in the right direction or to help in the various different ways to help even the playing field out across Charlotte. Right in, in Lakewood, there's a disconnect between residents, 
leadership and key stakeholders that serve and live or have businesses inside the neighborhood. So what we're doing, man, it's, it's simple. We're going back to old school community building. We're gonna get some few tents, we're gonna get some grills, some food, uh, speakers, uh, you know, have music playing, fun activities for the adults and and children. We're talking about spade game, we're talking about Uno, uh, talking about bouncy houses, and just making sure that we're going to the people instead of always asking the people to come to us. That's the key for me. We, sometimes we get so broad, so big. What makes you human? What makes me human? Let, let's go back to that, this direct contact. Shake a hand. How are you doing? And really mean it when we ask. And not I always ask somebody to fill out something, check a box, take a photo, post it on Instagram, and then go on by your business. Training the next group of leaders, uh, investing in the youth is so important because we have to create generational wealth. That's the only way that we can position certain neighborhoods like a Lakewood for upward mobility. It's a reason why behind everything that happens. And I, I think if we get to that why, we can figure out how and we can figure out what needs to be done for us to solve this issue. So that, that's what we'll do to help other people um, kind of grow in their own right as well. My name is Douglas Welton and I'm from the Madison Park neighborhood. It's located in South Charlotte near Parker Shopping Center. We have great people. We've got some wonderful mid-century modern character in our homes. And we're located in a great place in town. We're right in the middle of everything. And that makes for a wonderful community that's developed with all the people that are in the neighborhood. It's easy for us to get out and about and uh, get to know each other. Being a part of Stitch Together Charlotte is all about continuing the, the role of prosperity that we're having in our neighborhood. Right now we've got things very good and we, we like it that way. We want to keep our homes safe and people uh, happy and enjoying the, the community that we've built. And so for, for us it's very important to continue to develop leadership in our neighborhood organization and that leadership will help us as we go forward. One of the most successful projects we've had uh, in Madison Park is Madison Central Park. It's a cooperative project between uh, the neighborhood uh, and uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. We were able to use the old Pinewood Elementary uh, School yard and we were to able to develop that into a park that's a public space for the entire community to use. Using neighborhood matching grants and the efforts of over 100 volunteers, we were able to build a park that's used on a daily basis by parents and kids and disc golf players and dogs and everybody else to come out and just have a great time. For me, one of the important things about this project is it allows us to get outside of the mindset of Madison Park and we're able to uh, mix and mingle with folks, we're able to see their perspective and understand um, the ways we might be able to reframe our own issues and come up with a creative solution that allows us to go forward and build a better neighborhood and that's what it's all about. My name is Hilary Larson and I'm here representing Barkley Downs Homeowner Association and also South Park Association of Neighborhoods. We are about 60 plus neighborhoods and condo associations representing about 75,000 people that are in the greater South Park commercial but when people usually think of it they think of you know the mall or maybe they think of the TV show. We all want um, you know, our neighborhoods to be strong and we want to be able to come home at night and be able to do things with your children. And so that, um, I wanted to meet other neighborhood leaders and I thought that there might be some things that we're doing in our neighborhood that we could share. We all are sort of trying to band together where we can really work on rezoning and development and trying to be able to answer some really hard questions as, as South Park goes from becoming a very suburban to a much more urban. We have a lot more younger people moving in the neighborhood who want to walk, want that microbrewery, want to be able to have the food truck Friday like they might have had in Plaza Midwood or Noda. Um, those are not traditionally things that were you would have associated with South Park and yet we're evolving to that. So our organization is really trying to work on projects that connect pedestrians and try to make it a lot easier for people to get from point A to point B. And so the projects that we do, you know, really run from the typical landscape and sign toppers and, you know, festivals to really getting sort of our hands dirty with development and real estate. 
So one of the things we think that we can offer um, other communities is give you some help and guidance in how you can influence the development process, where you can intervene, um, how you can work with city council, uh, how you can begin to think about what makes good design. And so instead of just being opposed to projects, which doesn't always work, we might be able to change a project so that it can be a better fit. Thank you to each and every one of you for your leadership, commitment, and passion to make Charlotte more inclusive and welcoming to all current and future residents. It's exciting to see what we can accomplish while we stitch together our neighborhoods. As the name says, Stitch Together Charlotte, really working together with neighborhood leaders all across the city to, to start, you know, working on some serious progress to make Charlotte just absolutely wonderful. Volunteering is really hard work. We're talking about how to make Charlotte better, how to stitch Charlotte together. Um, it takes a lot of work over a long time to do that. So um, go out there and do it. <laughs> we all tend to focus on our own little patch and we don't realize how similar we really are, but also though that where we can actually um, put out a hand and, and try to help someone, uh, you get back in return. So, so we sort of see it as a win-win, um, and if nothing else, we just get a chance to really um, see some other communities and get a chance to see what's going on in Charlotte. Uh, we really need people to show that they care um, for each other, um, and we need people to know what is going on other folks neighborhoods so that you can provide a solution if you know of one. We can learn from other leaders in the community and share our experiences. Each one teach one. The more connections that we can make, the more we can value what's already here and take advantage of that to all of our benefit. Challenge your preconceived notions and talk to people. That's one thing that will keep you in a, in a place of growth. The way that we grow is one neighborhood at a time, one block at a time. And so by creating great leaders all over town, we're able to make a better town, I believe, because each area will be able to do the work that they need to do, make itself a little bit better every day. And as a city, we give people who move here the opportunity to go to one great place after another, and that just makes us a great city. Any community where you live, work, and play, it's all about the neighborhood equity. And I would just offer, what is your neighborhood equity like?